Hi, it's Katie Seriani Bull. Happy Easter. It's Sunday, April 12th. I hope you're having a beautiful Easter Sunday wherever you are. I'm looking forward to our turkey. It's in the oven. I don't have to cook. My husband, he likes cooking. He's off. I'm like the, the big breadwinner right now, the one working in the house. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> so uh, I hope you're having a really great day. Do you have kitties? Did the Easter Bunny find them? I'm sure she did because she found us. And, and and we're 18 and up, right? I'm almost 18. And so um, I just wanted to say hello. I hope you're having a really beautiful Sunday. We have beautiful weather here in BC on Vancouver Island. I hope wherever you are, it's warm, feels good. You're connecting with family, even if it's on an iPad. So I just want to take a moment to read you something really beautiful from this Oprah book. I love Oprah. Oprah Winfrey, what I know for sure. I think it really suits today and it really suits just everything going on in our world. The uncertainty. It's four weeks here, six weeks in other places. And it's, you know, we're all trying to stay positive, right? So you need to hear this. Okay. Say thank you. Many years ago, those words from Maya Angelou turned my life around. I was on the phone with her sitting in my bathroom with the door closed and the toilet lid down, weeping so uncontrollably that I was incoherent. Stop it, Maya chided. Stop it right now. And I, and say thank you. But, but you don't understand, I sobbed. To this day, I can't remember what it was that had me got so far gone, which only proves the point Maya was trying to make. I do understand, she told me. I want to hear you say it out loud now. Thank you. Tentatively, I repeated it. Thank you. She said it, and then she snuffled some more. But what am I saying thank you for? You're saying thank you, Maya said, because your faith is so strong that you don't doubt that whatever the problem is, you'll get through it. You're saying thank you because you know that even in the eye of the storm, God has put a rainbow in the clouds. You're saying thank you because you know there's no problem created that can compare to the creator of all things. Say thank you. So I did and still do. Being grateful all the time isn't easy, but it's when you feel least thankful that you are in the most need of what gratitude can give you, perspective. Gratitude can transform any situation. It alters your vibration, moving you from negative energy to positive. It's the quickest, easiest, most powerful way to affect change in your life. This I know for sure. I know it too, Oprah. It's true, okay? She knows what she's talking about. Should I, should I go on? Here's the gift of gratitude. In order to feel it, your ego has to take a back seat. I like to put a shawl around mine and tell her to have like a cup of tea. Some of that. What shows up in its place is greater compassion and understanding. Instead of being frustrated, you choose appreciation. Instead of, and the more grateful you become, the more you have to be grateful for. Maya Angelou was so right. Whatever you're going through, you will do just that. Go through it. It will pass. So say thank you now because you know the rainbow is coming. It's going to be okay. Just keep counting your lessons, learning the lessons. None of us has been through this before. And I don't know, this weather's keeping me sane. It's gorgeous. I walk and hike and <sighs> I'm just grateful for it. Okay, so my daughter needs to borrow my phone because it's like totally awesome, 10R, I'm so cool, man. And she's gonna use it to uh, record some of her university work to turn in because she's almost done school. Oh, and then she's gonna be stuck with the old people. I guess we'll start watching that, that tiger show. Uh, tiger Kingdom, Kingdom Tiger. Uh, anyway, I hear it's good. So I'm going to check it out. Okay, all the best. Have a great day. Hope you're eating something really yummy and got your share of chocolate. <sighs> See you next Wait, time. You know what? That was really short and I forgot to tell you my Easter memory from when I was little. Okay. When I was about four years old, it was probably my first big Easter egg hunt. My family and I all went down to Bowen Park and my big sister, my other big sister, Debbie, who's passed away. Actually, it was Easter weekend last year, but it was on the 18th. It was still, yeah, it was, it was over Easter. It was hard. So her and my big sister from Victoria and Freddie and the whole family, we were down in Bowen Park 
And as they said, okay, you know, go, every time I would run and see a pile of eggs, the big kids would like jump in front of me and I wouldn't get any. And this yeah. continued happening. I was like a mess. I was like a wreck. I still would be if that happened today. Like who wants to get pushed out of the way and not get chocolate? So when I got home, my sister ran out to the store and they made me wait inside and then they hid like little treats around the yard. And I remember feeling so special that they loved me so much. They just wanted to make my day that they knew I'd been greatly disappointed at the big public one. So I had a nice private family one, isn't that cool? And uh, yeah, today we've been, we've been smiling at some of the memories of taking our daughter over to Newcastle Island. They had some really great Easter egg hunts. And then they would have like coolers for the grown-ups. They would do like an adult hunt to get your booze while the kids got their chocolate. Yeah, that was kind of a win-win. Okay, so now I'm gonna go.